Hey, welcome back, Long Rodders, and welcome to this channel. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. You don't want to miss any of the future videos. And you that are here now do not want to miss this video. Make sure you stay to the end for more information on this fly. And this is a original fly to this channel. You ain't going to find this fly anywhere else, so you don't want to leave and go and try and find it somewhere else. And we're going to bring you more of these original flies to this channel where you won't. You have to be here, so you don't. That's why I say you want to make sure you subscribe, like, comment on these videos, and share it to all your friends. And today we're going to tie the Organza Caddis. And everybody's like, Organza Caddis, never heard of that one. That's right, because like I said, it's only find it here on this channel. And it already works, I already used it. So let's get to the vice. Right now and begin tying this amazing caddis pack. Oh Yeah, one more thing before we get to the fly. I want to tell you to go check out Craig and I think this is right Moosey Moonzy Channel he fishes all over the UK and all New Zealand and stuff Great videos go check out his channel The link will be below or you can go check it in a great out other great outdoor channels on our channel So go check his channel out He's really great videos. So check his channel out. You and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. start by debarbing the hook on the fly like we always do and we're going to start with uh we're going to tie it on sorry excuse me a standard 14 size 14 dry fly hook i'm going to start the black 70 denier thread in the front and run it all the way back to the bend of the hook Now we're going to take a grizzly hackle, and we're going to take that from down, way down in them feathers. You know, you don't use, these, use like to tie a size 24 atoms or something. You want them really small ones because we're not going to use a regular standard hackle. Because we just want a little bit of hair sticking out to represent legs, whatever, on this fly. And we're going to tie that in right back there where we left our thread off, run the thread up. Hey, man. You almost forgot to tell him about that little tab sticking out at the end of the feather. Well, I'll do it. <sighs> anyway, that little tab you see at the end of that feather, you want to leave a little bit of that there. That'll help you prevent from the feather being pulled out of your thread wraps as you're wrapping this feather around the hook. To our ice dubbing again we're going to use the helgramite and if you ever wonder this is whitlock's dubbing blends number two and i'll try and put it in our store so make sure you check and visit our store for all these fly tying materials but anyway we're going to dub that up and we're going to leave about two eyelet gaps behind the eyelet when you're dubbing this and i kind of like to make it a little loose dubbing you know makes the wraps of the hack will make more profound make it more look like ribbing oh the dubbing color we're using here is a really dark almost black really dark dark olive iced up Now we're going to rib this fly with the hackle right up to about two eyelets behind the eyelet.
now you're going to tie off the hackle. If you got a really rough looking hackle rib or hackle job, ribbon this fly. Don't matter. This mine looks a little rough here. I had a little problem with the hackle. If you have problems, just finish the fly and watch. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to go, when I do this video, I'm going to use this fly, the one that has the rough hackle. I tied a bunch of it. It looked perfect. But I'm going to take this one with the rough hackle, and that's what I'm going to use to catch a fish. Some, and that'll be the one that catches all the fish. Well, anyway, I'll talk to you about that at the end of the video. You people that are real are still here are gonna be happy you are because this is a really cool thing you're gonna learn now. What I did is I took a piece of cardboard and cut a wing shape out of it, and we'll show you a close up of the wing, what the wing material and it's a piece of cardboard what the wing looks like that we made. So go make yourself one of these. You can see it hinges out like this, so you can put it together. Next, I took a piece of the organza uh, uh, sheets and just cut a little square out of it that would fit down inside that cardboard. Next, and this is where a good pair of scissors will really help out. A pair of sharp ones will really help. You want to cut around the cardboard, just leaving a very little teeny bit stick out past the cardboard. As I will show you here. Next, you want to hold that cardboard very firmly together. And you want to take a lighter and burn the outside. Just burn the outside. Holding that cardboard together, spinning around your hands. So it shapes itself to that cardboard that you had made. Now you want to take them two pieces of cardboard that you fold it over and pull them apart. And inside that thing will be your wing. Just like magic and it's so cool looking. Now, you want to take that wing, fold it completely in half, make so both sides match, fold it in half, I laid it on this, lay it on half, and then you want to take your scissor tip of your scissors, just run along it, make a crease, so it folds it in half, and that'll make your caddis wing. Now, you want to take the caddis wing, the small end, and tie it with the big end out back, and you just want to tie it through. Thread it or uh, tie it down. Sorry. And if you have any material sticking out the front, I'd like to bend it back and tie it in so that the wing doesn't come off. Helps secure the wing in there. Now you want to secure this down with a couple thread wraps and take the thread back to where you, the wing is. And you want to tie in a normal size hackle for a size 14. So you want to tie in a size 14 hackle, another grizzly hackle, run your thread back up, and hackle this fly. Now you'll pull everything back, all the hack on everything, start forming the head, and now you can whip finish it. Alright, now that's all done. Let's take a closer look at this fly. And after we look at take a closer look, we will discuss where this fly came from, how it was made. All that. Let's go.
Hey, I'm all glad you stay kept with me here. That is a really cool fly. And this is how I know it works. A guy gave me one of these two years ago. Alright. And I vowed that I would learn to tie this fly. He gave me one. And there wasn't much of a caddis hatch on the little creek I was on. The little spring creek. There was a hatch going on nonetheless. And every once in a while. If you stand there and look at the water long enough. You'd see one rise. Take it. So I tied this fly on this guy gave me. He said he was having luck with them all morning. So I tied it on. And even when fish weren't rising, they were coming up after this fly. I mean, this fly was incredible. So I eventually lost that fly later on in the day. And I should have kept it. But then I took, I was trying to find out what the wing material was. And I looked for, like I said, two years. It's just now, you're now watching the video. And what happened was I was buying organza to tie spinners. Like, or I heard a Ganza works well, really well on spinners, which we're going to use on all our spinners. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them videos. And also there's a, a list of materials below this video, all the materials we used in this fly, and you can buy all the materials at our store. Make sure you go to our store to help support our channel. As you heard, the channel might go down for a couple weeks, so we also have a, if you care about that, we have a little link below here in this video. If you've been a long time subscriber and you care, there's a link down there for a GoFundMe thing to keep the channel alive. But anyway, back to talk about this. So I searched around. When I found this organza, I was like, I think that that light tan organza is what the uh, wing was on that. So I made up my own wing. I like wing burners. I have metal ones. We'll show you some more wing burning. You have to make sure you stick around for them videos. Is making your own mayfly wings. But I had a wing burner, so I took the wing and wing burner and looked at how the wings were shaped and made a wing. And, and I, you know, I trial and error. I made the wings for first were way too big. I had to cut the wing cardboard down smaller. So this is all you got to shape your wing burner. Then make a wing with it and see, hey, maybe it's a little too big. And then make it smaller. Or maybe you want it bigger. Maybe you're tying these on a size 10 hook, which you could do. I mean, there is some pretty big caddises come out. But these flies really work, so make sure you have these in your box. Make sure you have these in your box. And if you like this fly tying uh, video, you can see more of the series. Make sure you go every one of these flies in your box. And, you know, you're gonna have to, you're gonna want them so that you're covered in any situation. And like I said, we got a lot of flies that we do that you're not going to see anywhere because of years of trying and error. And, you know, I've come up with some original patterns that seem to work a lot better than the traditional patterns that you would see in a book or something. So we'll show you that. So make sure you subscribe to almost any awesome videos. Anyway, you want to see any of them video flies. And I sh make sure you recommend you go back and check out these videos so that you can have any situation covered and we're going to bring you more of all the patterns from nymph to spinner so check out the videos in the playlist here there's a video just for you and you can subscribe over here and do it so you don't miss any of our videos keep your lines wet out of the trees and only give them fish sort of